What is up guys, DZ here, and today I'm either going to pull a Starlight Rare or I'm about to lose about $200. So basically, I never really planned on buying a case of Brothers of Legend. The set does have a ton of great reprints, but many of those good reprints are short printed, so I didn't think I wanted to buy a case. However, last night at Locals, people were buying boxes out of a case that the Locals got, and after about nine boxes, when they still hadn't pulled either the Starlight Rare or the the Astral Rare, I was like, you know what, I'll take a gamble, I'll buy the remaining three boxes, and that's what we're going to open in today's video. Now as far as I know, those two cards, the Starlight Rare, which is Dragoon, and the Astral Rare, which is Leviathan Dragon, are about the same ratio as Starlight Rares in core sets, which means only on average, at least, about every other case has one of those cards. Now I could be wrong there, but I think this is about a 50-50 shot to whether or not the case that these boxes were bought from actually even has one of those cards at all. So we're either going to have a pretty incredible opening today or I'm about to lose $200. Real quick though, before we find out how much I minused on these three boxes, I want to tell you that today's video is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. So Ridge makes these really cool, sleek, industrial wallets that come in all sorts of styles and colors. Uh, this one right here is the carbon fiber option that I've been using for a long time now. They hold a bunch of cards in them. As you can see, they have a convenient money clip on the back for carrying cash and right now if you go to ridge.com slash DZ and use promo code DZ at checkout you'll get 15% off of your order through December 7th normally that code is worth 10% off but right now through December 7th it is worth that 15% off so if you were like on the fence about buying a Ridge wallet for yourself or a friend or a family member now really is the best time to do so thank you to Ridge wallet for sponsoring today's video okay so we have our first box here and I will mention that out of this case there were already at least two copies of forbidden droplet pulled so our chances of pulling that card are pretty low which is obviously disappointing that is one of the bigger reprints in this set and that's kind of why i'm saying that uh, we have to pull a starlet rare to make our money back oh nice i thought this was a starlet rare for one second but it's not obviously but this actually has the hollow bleed you can kind of see there that the uh, secret rare foiling goes past the artwork um these are like very common misprints in this set it would be really cool to get a play set of Pukri that all have the holographic bleed, but we'll have to see if this entire box has that. I don't know if it's like a per box basis or if it's just like a random thing in each pack. Although this one does have that as well. So maybe the entire box has that bleed. That would be pretty exciting. One thing that I will mention here that I was a little bit surprised about in my last video about this set is that a lot of people seem to not realize that Dragoon is only in the set as a Starlight Rare. I saw some people commenting like, hey, why didn't you mention the Dragoon reprint? Isn't that good? Dragoon's really expensive and it's like, it's only a Starlight Rare that you pull almost never and it's like hundreds of dollars. No, I don't really count that as a good reprint for Dragoon. Dragoon still needs a lower rarity reprint. Also, I really do think that, yeah, all of these have that bleed, which is really nice looking. Um, I know not everyone likes it. It is technically a misprint, but I would really like to pull some Pukri with that holographic bleed. As far as the other stuff in the set goes, besides like Dragoon, obviously, there are plenty of good cards in Brothers of Legend. You have a lot of the uh, stuff that we thought was going to be in Legendary Duel Season 3. Things like Malicious Bane and Adusted Gold and Magician Souls. Those are all really good reprints that people have been asking for. And Forbidden Droplet, while the reprint is super short printed, which is very annoying, it is still a good reprint. It does make the card slightly less expensive. I say slightly because it's not that much less expensive, but it is still a good reprint to have. And hopefully over time that reprint will go down in value. Forbidden Droplet is probably one of the most expensive cards in the format right now that's kind of like played across a lot of different decks, which is kind of annoying for a lot of budget players. It's not a card that you necessarily have to own if you want to play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! There are still um, plenty of other good cards that you can substitute it for, like you can play Dark Ruler No More is pretty good. Also, Altergeist Memory Gant there. We have not pulled one of these on the channel. I will actually probably play that one because once again here that hollow bleed looks really cool also if you guys can't tell what i'm talking about there it's because the secret refoiling it's kind of a pass to the artwork it goes into the text box i believe actually a lot of european cards just already have that at least from what i've seen from european cards i'm not sure if that is still the case but i know that it used to be back in the day so this isn't like the craziest thing what is this card it's cypher biplane i have not pulled that yet but it is a pretty cool thing in my opinion Okay, 
moving on here, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the individual ultras or secrets and stuff. We've already opened multiple boxes of the set on the channel. This is all about gambling for that uh, Starlight Rare or Astral Rare or whatever. We have uh, this other Altergeist card. Not a very good card. I uh, probably needed like a couple buffs to actually be playable, but the other two new Altergeist cards in the set are very good. So that is obviously pretty cool. We have Perform Pal Karee Boli. Karee Bobbly? I don't know how that's pronounced. Um, that was in the advent calendar. Pretty cool to see it in the set. I have not pulled that card thus far. My friend Ben actually pulled the Astral Rare um, Leviathan Dragon out of a box that he recently bought, and uh, that card looks pretty crazy in person. I'm not sure if it'll be as popular as the Utopia Astral Rare, but it is still a pretty nice looking card. What is this? Starving Venomy Dragon? <laughs> I have not seen that one. Okay, that's pretty wild. But yeah, it's kind of weird because uh, the Battles of Legends sets have always had this problem with short prints. Um, there's always some expensive card that people really want that ends up not being uh, as easy to pull as people requested. I think that uh, Forbidden Droplet could have been an ultra rare in this set. I think that would have been pretty nice, but uh, Konami really wanted it to still be a secret rare. I mean, just imagine Forbidden Droplet as like a $10 ultra in this set, because I think it would still be pretty expensive because it is that good and that popular, but it would be hard to see uh, how Oh, we actually, okay. I was like in disbelief for a second. There's so many like secret rare spells. Okay, so that does help even if we don't pull the Starlight Rare there. Forbidden Droplet, nice. I have not owned this card in a long time. I uh, owned them back when Rise of the Duelist first released, but then they had like one of their earlier price jumps to like over $100 and I got rid of them. And then I really haven't been playing decks that need that card, uh, so I just never picked them up again. But uh, that is a pretty cool pull out of this one box. And that's kind of where this set is right now. If you pull a Forbidden Droplet, if you pull like one of the other good cards, Magician Souls or Malicious Bane, you have a decent chance of making your money back on a box. But if you don't pull those cards, it can be pretty minor. Also, we did pull one copy of Altergeist Pukri with that holographic bleed. I'm sure people are sick of me talking about that. I really do hope the other two boxes have that, though, so that I have a chance of pulling three copies of Pukri with that on there. Go through here. Speedroid Scratch. Just a couple uh, packs left here. Probably not pulling the Starlight out of this box. I will say there was no Dragoon pulled at my locals last night. A lot of people were buying boxes of Brothers of Legend from different cases that the locals got, and we did not see any copies of Dragoon, so I think that that would be the one that we would pull if we do manage to pull either the Dragoon or the Leviathan Dragon. I guess I can spend a little bit of time talking about card values and why people care about that stuff. Pretty much any time that I mention like values of boxes in videos, I get people that are complaining about like, well, why don't you just like focus on the enjoyment of opening packs? You know, that's what Yu-Gi-Oh is all about. It doesn't always have to be about money. And while I do agree with you that Yu-Gi-Oh is not only about money and you should not only buy product just to try and plus, um, I will say that one of the reasons that a lot of people care about value is that if you buy a box and you don't make your money back, that means you could have bought all of the cards in the box for less than you spent on the box and you still would have had money left over. So if you wondered why people care about value, that's why. If you can just buy every card in the box without having to buy a box and you actually get them guaranteed that way, you will actually save money. But I understand that people don't really care about that all the time. You know, opening packs, opening boxes, that's a really fun thing and I get it. You know, I'm someone that enjoys doing it from time to time as well too. But if you're wondering why people talk about value, that is why they're just talking about that like, well, if I just bought a box and I lost $20 on it, that meant that I could have bought all those cards and still saved $20. Going through here, I think this one has not as striking of a holographic bleed, but it does have it a little bit there. It's fine. I mean, I don't really need three copies of Pukri with that, but it would have been kind of cool, you know, I don't know. This is the new uh, Pot of Greed spell right there for Winged Beast decks, which at the moment are pretty darn popular, so I wonder if that card is going to see competitive play. We go through Evil Hero Adusted Gold, one of the better pulls in the set, a card that was like over $100 for a really long time. Also, we have Ice Mirror. I forgot to talk about this card in either of my previous two opening videos, but uh, this is one that I talked about a while ago because it was a card that was in Duel Links, but not in the TCG, and uh, they actually 
actually added a restriction here <laughs> on this card um, that says at the very end, but you cannot special summon from the extra deck while you control that face up special summoned monster. As far as I know, the Duel Links version and the anime version of Ice Mirror do not have that restriction. So they actually did think it was a little bit too good without that on there. Which is funny because I remember talking about that card and saying it would be pretty good in certain decks like frogs for example and people were like no no one would play it but apparently Konami thought it was good enough to put that restriction on there so that people wouldn't abuse it. All right opening up some more packs here we have rank of magic i'm not going to read the <laughs> rares or the not the rares the ultra rares that'll take way too long i feel like people at this point are pretty familiar with the set you know what's good you know what's bad you know what you want you know what you don't want so i'm not going to uh, waste anyone's time you all just want to see if i'm about to lose 200 dollars or not and honestly i want to see if i'm about to lose that much as well although admittedly the forbidden droplet does help quite a bit because i think at the moment that card is like almost a hundred dollars i mean how crazy is that it's weird because when rise of the duelist first released i believe uh forbidden droplet was around 70 to 80 dollars at the high end and now it is obviously way more than that even after the card has received a few reprints what I think is kind of uh, fun, though, is that that card, when it was released, wasn't really that great. Like, the card was good, don't get me wrong. People knew it had a lot of potential, but for whatever reason, in the first, like, format or two where that card was legal, it was really not that popular. Maybe it was the price tag, but I don't think so, because people were playing a lot of the other cards in that set that were also very expensive, but it took, like, a little while for people to really play Forbidden Droplets and discover how good it was when you were able to negate an entire board while also putting cards in your graveyard and the attack reduction is actually extremely relevant that is one thing that i noticed immediately so the deck that i played that card in was invoked dogmatica yeah i know summon alistair but i played that at the remote duel invitational way back um i guess now like over a year ago and i thought that forbidden droplet was crazy you know i would play against full combo boards and i would uh forbidden droplet and then summon purgatrio and attack over all of them for game you can even do that right now in uh sword soul you can kind of do that at least because of Berserker of the Tenyi. That is a really good card that does a ton of damage, especially against boards that you've used Forbidden Droplet against. So yeah, Forbidden Droplet uh, was a very hyped card in Rise of the Duelist. Don't get me wrong, it was one of the most expensive cards in the set, but it wasn't as popular back then as it is right now. And that's really one of the many reasons why we've seen the price go up to crazy amounts over the past year and a couple months. We have Stealth Kragen Spawn. I am uh, not very hopeful about these uh, last packs, so it's all gonna come down to the final box, I'm pretty sure, which is a little nerve wracking because I'm starting to think that I did not uh, win this challenge of trying to pull a Starlight Rare or an Astral Rare. First, Nibiru that we've pulled, by the way, pretty cool. I like seeing Nibiru in this set. Nice to give uh, that card a lot of reprints because it is quite popular. It's one of those cards that even if it's not great in every single format, as a competitive player, you still basically need to own Nibiru just in case it does become good again. It's also a card that's very good at local tournaments. We have a Rebirth Judgment for our final secret rare in that box. Okay, so it comes down to the last box here. I am a little bit nervous. Uh, let's see if we can actually pull a Dragoon or the Astral Rare Leviathan Dragon. Man, my desk right now is just an absolute disaster. There's like so many pack wrappers around. It reminds me of uh, doing that case opening for Birds of Destiny a few weeks ago. There were like so many packs around my office. It was crazy. We have Inferno Terror. I saw a Secret Rare and I got really excited. Or uh, Sorry, not Secret Rare. I mean, it is a Secret Rare. But I saw a Fusion Monster and I was like, oh man, is that Dragoon? But nope, just Inferno Terra. I mean, you'll know when you pull a Starlight Rare, like it looks really crazy, but will we pull one here? Probably not. I'm starting to uh, lose a bit of my faith here, but we'll see. Penguin Sword, great card there. Ultimate Leo Utopia Ray. Some of that new Utopia support is pretty good in this set, actually. I've not seen anyone playing it that much online, but I think people are giving it a chance just going off of how many people I've seen comment about picking up that new Utopia stuff. Uh, many of those cards, I believe, are from the structure deck that we were supposed to get, but uh, they did not uh, decide to give it to the TCG for some reason. All right, 
packs. I'm just destroying these packs here as we go along, trying to see if we can pull any sort of value out of the sets. Uh, it would be nice to pull a Magician's Souls. We have not pulled one of those in any of my openings of Brothers of Legend, so that card would be pretty nice to see. Another copy of Nibiru. That's pretty cool. Not the most expensive card in the set, but it is a card that is worth a little bit. I think the last time I checked last night, it was like $10, maybe $10, $12. Not really sure about that one, but that's a card that I could see um, being like around that $10 mark for a long time, just because so many people want Nibiru in their deck. We have Rebirth Judgment. Pulled a lot of those, a lot more of those than Forbidden Droplets or Magician Souls. We also have not pulled Malicious Bane in any of our openings, so that would be a pretty cool card to see as well. So I think the only cards besides like the Astral Rare and the Starlet Rare that we haven't pulled um, so far have been Malicious Bane and Magician Souls. So those would be cards that I'd like to uh, pull in this final box, but we will have to see. Only one more pack on the right side of the box here. Losing all faith in pulling a Starlet Rare pretty much, but nice. We have the map card like that one. Okay, final side of the final box here. What are we going to pull? Did I lose $200? Saw a fusion monster, got really excited, but it was not a Dragoon. Oh man. I mean, at this point, it's not quite like losing $200 because we did pull that droplet, but still, we'll see. We pulled number four, Stealth Kragen. Here we go. I mean, let's be real, you guys. I one time spent $200 trying to pull an FA Whip Crosser, which was a common card. So this is not the worst I've ever done as far as trying to buy boxes to pull one specific card. Um, and that was just a crazy moment. Uh, shout out to anyone that remembers that. That was a few years ago now. Altergeist Pukri once again with, yeah, no bleed there or very minor amounts of hollow bleed there. So I might actually try to pick up a place out of those sometime. We have Grandpa Demito. See, that one has a lot more bleed. Maybe, I don't know. It's like, it's kind of weird because I think the hollow bleed effect is like not a huge misprint compared to like other misprints where like the name is screwed up or like the rarity is not printed on there correctly. But it's like a pretty cool misprint, I guess, you know, if you have a couple cards with it. Yeah, I feel like all these cards actually have more uh, hollow bleed than that one Pooker we, we pulled. That's kind of sad, actually. Okay, five packs left, I think, around five packs. We have Magician Souls, nice, in one of the final packs, so we did pull this card. Okay, so not that bad then, even if we don't pull the Starlight Rare, which uh, where we have we have three packs left, so I don't think it's gonna happen, but uh, we will have to see, wait, no, no. <laughs> I got a little bit excited there, I thought I saw Leviathan Dragon, but nope. Just ZS Utopic Sage. Oh man, two packs left. Oh, sorry, three packs left. I cannot count. Three packs left. We have Ice, Knight, Appliance here, Propel Lion, Dollhouse, uh, Fighting Spirit, and Toy Parade. Toy Parade. I think I'm getting baited because the Hollow Bleed effect looks a little bit like a Starlet Rare from like the side. I think that's what's happening here. We have the Heavenly Squire, Silent Sea Nettle, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, Beatrice, of course, and noble knights shield bearer all right we have our final pack here <laughs> is the starlight in the final pack of the final box you know what i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it is probably not but we did pull one droplet and one magician souls so we have not lost that much value out of these boxes and i still think it was like a fun uh, sort of gambling challenge to do here utopia soul binding gate and we have Dragonroid for our final secret rare. So unfortunately, no Starlight Rare or Astral Rare in this particular opening. That is kind of sad. You know, it's a 50-50 really because like I said, we didn't know if that case even had one of those cards in there because I do think it is one per every other case. So unfortunately, we got a little bit unlucky in today's opening. But still, we pulled some good cards and we made most of the value back. So it wasn't that bad. It just wasn't as good as I thought it might be. But I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Goodbye.